So that's something else that we learned in our earlier sessions. Diverging lenses have negative focal lengths. If it was a converging lens, it would have a positive focal length. As soon as you see something's diverging, you know it's a negative focal length. And when you see it's converging, you know it's a positive focal length. So Okay, so I'm going to replace F with the word negative. Mm -hmm. I know this is going to be negative. So what does that tell me about the left-hand side of the equation? Is the left-hand left side of the equation positive or negative? negative. All right, so we knew the sign of F. Do we know either of these two signs? Well, we know that the image is going to be... Now remember, we can't assume this anymore. This is what we're trying to prove, right? We're trying to show how we know this. So which of these variables do we know the sign for? Um, well, diverging. I think you were about to say diverging means a negative image distance, but no, it means a yeah, negative really focal solid. point. Yeah, diverging means a negative focal point. What do we know about the sign of the object distance? Always positive. Yeah, in a simple problem, the object distance is always positive. In a simple problem, the object distance is always positive. So I can write the word positive here in the place of the object distance. OK? Um, so what do I know about this ratio, positive or negative? Positive. And then in order to get a negative answer, you have to negative. Um, the image distance has to be negative. Yeah. This ratio has to be negative, because otherwise how could we get a negative over here? And if the ratio is negative, then since the top is positive, the denominator has to be negative. So this tells us that S prime has to be negative. All right, well, we never really did a problem like this before, so it's not surprising uh, that uh, we had some difficulty getting through this. So here's a good technique for this type of problem. All we really care about here, all we're trying to do is predict qualitatively what the image is like. And the qualitative comes from the signs. So I can just keep writing negative and positive in here um, and, uh, and working our way through that. All right, um, this is the proof that the chart is right. We just proved that a diverging device has to give you a virtual image. And as I said, it's, it's convenient that we don't usually have to go through all this junk to get to here. But if you're, you might be required to actually show it. And this is how we would show it out. Uh, all right. Once you know how to do this, this is not uh, rocket science, but it's hard to come, come up with it the first time. All right. Uh, so we would get that S prime there is negative. And what, what's the meaning of a negative image distance? What does that tell us? Yeah. A uh, negative image distance means that we have a virtual image. Okay. Now, how do we know that it's shrunk? I think I'll just go through that with you. So, what does it mean if it's shrunk? Uh, think back to what we were just talking about for magnification. What does that tell you if, some, if an image is shrunk? What does that tell you the relationship between? Um, so, the, if the image height is shrunk, Smaller. smaller yeah. Image. If the image height is smaller, the image distance is smaller. Over here in this equation, which of these two terms has to be bigger in magnitude? Well, we know that we want to come this, this to come out to be negative overall. So which of these two terms has to be bigger in magnitude? positive term or the negative term? Which one has to be the bigger one? In magnitude. In negative. Yeah. Otherwise, how could the combination be negative? So we know that this term is bigger in magnitude. So which of these denominators is bigger? Um, the S prime. So if the no, ratio is bigger, does that mean it has a big denominator or a small denominator? If that means that it has a small denominator. Okay. So we just proved that since this ratio has to be bigger, this denominator has to be smaller. What does that tell us about whether it's magnified or shrunk? Shrunk. That's, yeah, that's the thing we were seeing earlier. If your image distance is smaller, then your image height is also smaller. So now we've also proved qualitatively uh, that not only does it have to be virtual, it has to be shrunk. 
Uh, not only does this term have to be negative, it has to be big enough in magnitude to outweigh this positive right. over here. And the only way this can be big is if this denominator is small. All right, notice this is not the kind of thing that you can do in your head. You actually have to write down each step and write down, so everybody tries to do this in their head, but if you just write down, ah, this is negative, and I need this term to be bigger, so I need this term to be smaller, things clarify a lot. Uh, but if you try to do the steps in your head, it's very easy to get confused because we, we keep switching back on ourselves. Okay, um, so we've shown that it is virtual, and we've shown that it shrunk. <coughs> How do we know that it's upright? Well, we have just memorized the, the memory aid ultraviolet. Upright always goes with virtual. But do you remember, how did we show originally that upright always goes with virtual? That, we can't use this equation for that anymore. Um, do you remember how we did that? So let's say we have a virtual image. What does that tell you directly when you have a virtual image? Which variable does that tell you about? Yeah, and what does it tell you about S prime? Um, that it's negative. Yeah, this tells us that S prime is negative. Now, what does that tell us about the magnification? Remember, what's the, the total formula for magnification, including the signs? Um, negative S prime over S. Yeah, now I'm not putting in the dots anymore because now I want the signed version. So what do we know about M now? That's why we, we learned that memory aid ultraviolet, that upright always goes with that. Because again, you might not get full credit if you say oh, it's upright because of ultraviolet. So, okay. So this comes from the magnification equation. Earlier we did some work where we just focused on the magnitudes with the magnification equation, but sometimes you need the signed version, and the signed version has a negative sign. Okay, um, all right, so again, when possible, it's nice to short circuit this and just look at the chart. Uh, but if you're actually asked to explain or prove something, um, you need to know how to do this. Um, and again, you kind of have to check with your TA as to how much of an explanation is necessary. All right, but for one thing, notice sometimes it's hard to get the ray diagrams to come out right, to scale. So it's also nice to be able to do things by algebra. That make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, well this would obviously be a good thing to go through again. And again, try to use this type of notation when we write each of these steps down. This is, uh, this is hard for students to come up with on their own, but once you've seen it, you should be able to use that to solve similar types of problems. Notice that I, you have to keep doing one little step at a time. Figure out one thing, then make an arrow and figure out another thing, then make an arrow and figure out another thing. Because even two or three things is too much to hold in our heads. So we have to write it down on paper. All right, now most important, let's go back and maybe improve our table here. If you know you have a converging device, what does that tell you mathematically? What does that tell you, uh, which of the variables does that, does that tell you about? The focal length. And what does it tell you about the focal length? That's positive. Good. And if you have a diverging device, what, which of the variables does that tell you about? The focal length is All right, so maybe we should have put that in our table from the start, because it's easy to keep forgetting that. And if you have a real image, which of the variables does that tell you about? Uh, the uh, the S, S prime. Image distance. And what does it tell us about the image distance? It's And that's for both of these real images. So I'll put that with both of the real images. And then when it's virtual, S prime is negative. And that would be for both of these virtuals. So maybe that's something we should have put in the table from the start, because it's easy to forget what who tells you about the focal length and who tells you about S prime. I think it's very tempting for people to say, oh, it's diverging, so the image distance is negative. Or it's converging, so the image distance is positive. No, converging and diverging tells us about the focal distance. And similarly, I think it's easy for people to say, oh, it's real, so the focal point is positive. No, the real distance, real tells you about the image distance. Okay, so now we have a new and improved table. Converging tells you focal length is positive. Diverging tells you focal length is negative. Anytime the image is virtual, the image distance is negative. And anytime the image is real, the image distance is positive. Okay. And the magnification will tell you whether or not it's upright or inverted. Then you could use the magnification to figure out if it's upright or inverted if you include, do it the sign way. All right, of course, if you're just using a table, you know automatically if it's yeah. upright or inverted, but you have to, if you have to prove it, you can use magnification or you can use your ray tracing. The ray tracing pretty much always tells you if something's upright or inverted. That's actually pretty easy there. Okay. And then if you have to do things algebraically, the first thing we said, oh, diverging means F is negative, and that got off to the races. And again, on simple problems, object distance is always positive. 